Most scientists agree that sea levels will rise, but some say it won't happen for centuries. Now, a new study suggests sea levels will increase several feet over the next 50 years. It claims the world's coastal cities, including New York and London, could be underwater by the end of the century. Without a dramatic reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, the global sea level is likely to increase several meters over a time scale of 50 to 150 years, the paper states. It points to the fact that the Earth's oceans were 6 to 9 meters higher during the Eemian period. This took place about 120,000 years ago, at a time when temperatures were only around 1 degree Celsius warmer than today. Global warming of 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times would risk submerging cities, the paper said. We're in danger of handing young people a situation that's out of their control, James E. Hansen, a retired NASA climate scientist who led the new research, told the New York Times. The paper was released this morning by a European science journal, Atmospheric Chemistry and Physics. Current assessments place emphasis on practical effects such as increasing extremes of heat waves, droughts, heavy rainfall, floods and encroaching seas, reads the study. There is an urgency to slow carbon dioxide emissions the longevity of the carbon in the climate system and persistence of the induced warming may lock unavoidable highly undesirable consequences. The consequences would include killer storms, the disintegration of large parts of the polar ice sheets and a rise in sea levels that would exceed that world coastal cities before the end of this century, claim researchers. The paper talks about a specific mechanism that will provoke this abrupt climate shift. Researchers claim the initial melting of the great ice sheets will put a cap of relatively fresh water on the ocean surfaces near Antarctica and Greenland. This will slow down or even close a system of the ocean currents that provides heat throughout the planet, allowing some of it to escape into space. The deeper areas of the ocean will experience warming, which will ultimately accelerate the melting of the part of the ice sheet that sits above sea level and the extreme temperature difference between the tropics and the poles will produce powerful storms, which will mirror those that happened 120,000 years ago when Earth experienced a natural warming, according to the paper. Some experts see this paper as a step in the right direction to understanding when the climate experienced sudden, drastic shifts. But others still remain hesitant about the claims made in the draft paper, released last year, and are still on the fence with the final version. Some of the claims in this paper are indeed extraordinary, said Michael E. Mann, a climate scientist at Pennsylvania State University. They conflict with the mainstream understanding of climate change to the point where the standard of proof is quite high. Although the nations of the world have agreed to work on limiting the warming to 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 2 degrees Celsius, they have yet to finalize a program that will successfully achieve this goal. The Earth has already warmed by about half that amount. About all land ice has started to melt and the oceans are rising at a fast pace. According to Hansen and 18 co-authors, it has been about 120,000 years when the Earth warmed naturally that hit a temperature slightly higher than today and sea levels increased by 20 to 30 feet. The paper warns that this will happen much faster than previously thought and will force those living on and near the coastlines to retreat inland. That would mean loss of all coastal cities. Most of the world's large cities and all their history, Dr. Hansen said in the new paper. A separate study, published last month, claims sea level rise caused by man-made climate change could last 10,000 years. Even if global warming falls below the government's target of 2 degrees Celsius, around 20% of the world's population will be forced to migrate away from coasts. That means that unless we cut carbon emission drastically, major cities such as New York, London, and Shanghai, will be completely submerged, scientists have warned. The study, published in Nature Climate Change, argues that scientists have been short-sighted in looking at the impact of climate change over one or two centuries. In the latest research, scientists looked at the impact of four possible levels of carbon pollution, 1,280 to 5,120 billion tons, emitted between the year 2000 to 2300. Studying data from over the last 20,000 years, the researchers predicted what will happen to global temperatures, sea level, and ice cover over the next 10,000 years. The complex modeling effort was led by Michael Eby of the University of Victoria and Simon Fraser University. Carbon is going up, 
and even if we stop what we are doing in the relatively near future, the system will continue to respond because it hasn't reached an equilibrium, Marcotte explains. If you boil water and turn off the burner, the water will stay warm because heat remains in it. A similar but more complex and momentous phenomenon happens in the climate system, according to the study which is written by nearly two dozen leading Earth scientists. Current releases of the carbon contained in carbon dioxide total about 10 billion tons per year. The number is growing 2.5% annually, more than twice as fast as in the 1990s. Humans have already put about 580 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The researchers looked at the effect of releasing another 1,280 to 5,120 billion tons between 2,000 and 2,300. In our model, the carbon dioxide input ended in 300 years, but the impact persisted for 10,000 years, Marcotte says. By 2,300. The carbon dioxide level had soared from almost 400 parts per million to as much as 2,000 parts per million. The most extreme temperature rise, about 7 degrees Celsius by the year 2300, would taper off only slightly, to about 6 degrees Celsius, after 10,000 years. The picture is disturbing, says co-author Sean Marcotte, an assistant professor of geoscience at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Perhaps the most ominous finding concerns commitment, Marcotte says. Most people probably expect that temperature and carbon dioxide will rise together and then temperature will come down when the carbon dioxide input is shut off. But carbon dioxide has such a long life in the atmosphere that the effects really depend on how much you put in we are already committed to substantial rises in temperature. The only question is how much more is in the pipe. The warming ocean and atmosphere that are already melting glaciers and ice sheets produce a catastrophic rise in the ocean. Sea level will go up due to melting, and because warming expands the ocean. We have to decide in the next 100 years whether we want to commit ourselves and our descendants to these larger and more sustained changes, Marcotte says. First author Peter Clark and co-authors calculated that ocean encroachment from just the lowest level of total carbon pollution would affect land that in 2010 housed 19 percent of the planet's population. However, due to climate's momentum, that effect will be stretched out over thousands of years.